People are scary good and scary fast when it comes to breaking video games. The day that a brand new game releases, you're just as likely to stumble upon a review of that game as you are a video of someone glitching the hell out of that very same game. Fallout 76 and Cyberpunk are perfect examples. People were more interested in how broken and chaotic those games were upon release than anything else, and hey, I can't blame them. Fucking around with games is really fun! You're taking a detour from the adventure that the developers set up for you, and you're making a brand new one that's way less predictable. And some games have glitches so infamous that it actually adds to the interest people have in the game. Hell, the only reason I ever bought Grand Theft Auto 4 was because I wanted to try the swing set glitch, and to this day, I haven't used that game for anything else. But then there's games like NASCAR Thunder 2004, a classic among NASCAR fans that, despite its popularity, has remained seemingly without any secrets since it released 18 years ago. And boy, I feel like an asshole making my seventh video about this game. I promise I'll stop someday. After all, I've been habitually drinking Mountain Dew and eating Burger King for years, and it has to kill me eventually. Honestly, though, this game? Practically bulletproof. I've been playing that shit since kindergarten, and in all that time, I'd only ever seen one glitch happen one time. This is the story of how all of that changed. One day I was slamming into cars at turn one of Pocono Infield for like an hour and making them go What can I say? I know how to have a good time. But seriously, what I was actually trying to do was hit one of the cars so hard that they would actually clip through the wall and out of bounds. I was always really interested in the idea of driving around outside of the track and looking for easter eggs and the such. Maybe if I drove around outside of the track, I'd find the set they used for Victory Lane, or maybe a developer snuck in a secret like a tribute to Dale Earnhardt. Oh shit! Get the fuck out of here! What are you doing? Yo, get the fuck out of here! You made some contact. Number 32, you made some contact. Eventually, I actually did manage to force another car out of bounds. It was only for a second before it drove right back onto the track. But for 15 years, the walls of this game might as well have been reinforced with military-grade main character plot armor bullshit because ain't shit gotten through them in all my days playing it until that day. So I plugged in another controller, went back to the scene of the crime, and tried to find out what I had done to finally break out of bounds after 15 years of trying. 15 years of castration. Frustration. I started feeling like I should find something better to do because I had wandered far away from where the glitch even happened and I still ain't found shit. Surely I could find something better to do with my time. Fill this bucket, take out the trash, plan for my future, practice crying, NASCAR away. Then, without any warning at all... Oh. My God. Holy shit. Holy shit, I did it! I'm out of bounds! I didn't even know this was possible, holy shit! Look, you can drive around! I thought there might not be anything solid out here, but you can drive around anywhere you want! This is amazing! So, what happened? Why does this work? Well, on the technical level, no fucking clue. But I have figured out how to trigger this at every single track in the game. Basically, almost every wall in NASCAR Thunder has some sort of weak spot that you can push through with the help of another car. And these weak spots can be a lot of things. In this case, there was a wall outside of the track with no collision. And right here, where it intersects with the solid wall of the track, is where the weak spot is. And for all of you that want to break out of bounds yourself and take a look around, just know that there's many more types of weak spots than just this. For example, you can also typically break out of bounds at the start-finish line, places where two different types of solid walls connect, places where wall segments have been spaced inconsistently, and strangely enough, if you turn right around at a known weak spot, the wall just across the road from there may be a weak spot as well. I'll leave a list of the best weak spots at each track in the description down below, so if you want to feel like a big shot easter egg hunter, you can pause the video now and get hunting before I spoil it all. As for everyone else, welcome to the great beyond! Out here you can see your favorite tracks in ways you've never seen them before! You won't believe what we've got out here! Trees! RVs! These! guys over here and they've all gotta go! Visit the famous Rattlesnake Hill and celebrate with a backflip! Wow, it's the Martinsville Pond or whatever! Mosh Pit! We've even got the beautiful hills of Sonoma, California! What an awful view! God damn it! How about we go higher for a better look?
Wow, that was so good. It was it was actually so good that it ended the bit. Well done. It's not the most exciting time wandering around at some of these tracks, because a lot of them are pretty crude. It really is just blurry-ass trees and RVs at most of these places. But there are a lot of points of interest if you know where to look. Like in Indianapolis, you can see that there's a full set of grandstands sitting hidden beneath Turn 2. And back at Pocono Infield, there's all sorts of fuckery, including some hidden underground cars, some fuck-off-sized arrows out of view beyond the backstretch, and this mysterious yellow cube at rest behind the main grandstands, none of which exist if you visit the regular Pocono track. And when you find stuff like that, it feels pretty rewarding, of course, but it's the complete opposite when you go somewhere you've been looking forward to, and it's just 100% unremarkable. Like, oh, hey look, that's the Hilton Garden Inn on Midway Avenue. No, that's right, it's just another FUCKING LIE! Well then let's just check out Daytona USA instead. Haha, <laughs> just kidding! EA Sports, if it's in the game, you can go fuck yourself! That aside, there are some tracks that are just beautiful when you get just the right camera angle to show them off. Bristol is a great one, mostly because the track is so naturally awesome looking, but you can also get a really good look at the New York track if you break into the infield. And then there's Devil's Canyon, which is just about the best environment in the whole game. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, you won't be finding any tributes or victory lanes out there, but there's a lot to explore, so I'm sure I missed something. Places like New York are especially a nightmare to explore, because there's just so many- <laughs> FUCK! Really funny joke, guys. Very cool. Shitting myself in fear. But you know that ain't even the scariest shit out here? You want to see what I'm talking about? Come on, let's drive as far away as we can. All right, here we go. Just gonna drive way out there. All the way out there. Oh, <laughs> no, okay, the floor's gone. That's fine. Just flying away from anything that I can recognize that gives me comfort. Boy, we're, we're getting awful close to the sky. Is that normal? Ah, fuck! Alright, we are beyond reality, we are a spaceship of one, and we have just launched into the terrifying vastness of space. I really, really hate it out here. Any scenario in which the world I know is reduced to a tiny little bubble within an all-encompassing endless void makes me start thinking about some dark shit. But for you guys, I'll keep going. We've got to see how far we can go. We got to see how big the world is. Come on, uh, show me another track. Tell me all the tracks are connected, right? Give me something, please. The game just crashes when you go too far. Whatever. Y'all want to see some more cool shit? I mentioned it in passing before, but you can break into the infield no sweat at every track. The outer boundaries, there's some exceptions, but the infield is available at every track. And here you'll find what I think is one of the most interesting hidden objects in the game. Of course there's the garages, the pit area, and the low-res victory lane that you can explore to your heart's content, and yeah, that's pretty neat. But what you probably wouldn't expect is that, from what I can tell, at the very middle point of almost every track is... well... something? God knows what they're for, and I haven't found all of them yet, but there are these fence posts just sitting smack in the middle of the map. It's a fun adventure trying to track them all down, because some of them are really strange, and not just because they don't seem to do anything, but because a bunch of them aren't even fence posts. Like, at Talladega, instead of a fence post, there's this fucked up hybrid of an ambulance and a camper. Then at Darlington, we've just got this demon shit. But the coolest one by far to me is the one hidden beneath the track at Sawmill. It's a bit tricky to get to without accidentally driving back onto the track, but if you push through right here and move slowly, it's almost a straight shot to the secret. And boy, this was the first post object I ever found, so I thought I'd struck gold when I found it. A mysterious wooden ship wheel. The only object at any track with animation applied to it, sitting hidden below the forests of Sawmill. I thought I was about to embark on a fucking journey when I saw this shit. Like this was some part of a code left by the developers to unlock something that no one else had ever seen before. So I started the journey, using the ship wheel as a hint to explore the dockside racetrack in search of the next clue. 
Then I spent over an hour wandering around before I remembered that, no, there are other animated objects, like blimps and the tops of the scoring towers, so the wheel being animated probably didn't mean anything. Plus, I've looked high and low all over this godforsaken void, and there's just nothing here. So that was the end of that adventure. However, that is not the end of our adventure. We still have two more secrets left, and I really do think you'll want to see this. But before you try this next secret out yourself, I gotta warn you to turn off autosave before you try this out because this secret will have an effect on your best lap time at whatever track you try it on. So anyone messaging me like, oh, my best lap screen is all messed up now, why didn't you warn me? I beg of you to go cry to someone that cares. For this next secret, I recommend Homestead Miami if you really want to have fun with it. It's a big, wide, fast racetrack, and you're gonna need all of it. Now you don't need to do this part, but I'm gonna run some laps just to show about what the car is capable of before we go crazy on it. Well, I'm clearly no professional, <laughs> but this lap right here felt right on the money, so I'll stop there and we should all keep this time in mind going forward. What you need to do now is go ahead and push your car through the infield wall, and honestly, you can just park it out there in the lake, or really anywhere within this gap on the map. You'll know you're in the right spot if the game starts running really slowly and choppy, and the longer it runs that way, the longer the secret will be in effect. So if you want your money's worth, stay out there a few minutes at least. After you've waited a while, it's time to drive back out onto the track, and you'll probably notice what happened to the car before you even get there. Alright, time to do some more hot laps, and holy crap, this thing is hauling! The engine's super responsive, it's super grippy, but it looks like I'm still hitting the same speeds mid-corner? Oh, not the best lap, but let's see at the line. Whoa! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, by leaving the defined racing area and purposely slowing down the game, we have essentially speed-hacked NASCAR Thunder 2004 and it'll stay speed hacked for about as long as you decided to keep your car out of bounds, which is why we spent all that time just sitting doing nothing. You'll also notice the timer isn't affected by the speed of the game, so you'll be setting lap times over five seconds faster than you ever could without this exploit. And this isn't jacking with the physics of your car or anything, it's speeding up the whole game. So if you pull this off with AI cars on the track, you might as well be running the Indy 500 because all of you are going to be tearing nothing but ass. <laughs> wow. What a cool day we had, huh? See? It's fun fucking around with these games, isn't it? Wait, what the hell? That doesn't look like NASCAR Thunder. Oh, that's right. The last secret is that you can break out of bounds in all these later NASCAR games too. And also in the game that came before it, but only kinda. Well, I should be taken off. Feel free to send me any of the stuff you find. I haven't gone to all the night versions of the tracks, or most of the tracks in the other games yet, so there's probably lots of cool secrets out there right for the picking. Alright, catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.